Hi, I'm Professor Graham Yorston, and today's pioneer of psychiatry is Felix Platter. He's one you may not have heard of, but he was one of the first to apply a more scientific methodology to the study of mental disorders. And he introduced the term alienation, which led to psychiatrists being called alienists for the next 300 years. Felix Platter was born in Switzerland in 1536, the son of a one-time goat herder who had lifted himself out of poverty to become a language scholar, schoolmaster and printer. He went off to study at Montpellier University at the tender age of 15, narrowly escaping being robbed and murdered by brigands along the way. He kept a journal of his travels and experiences at a time of huge social and religious upheaval when being a Swiss Protestant in Catholic France was not without its dangers. At this time, European medicine was still very much dominated by the works of Hippocrates and Galen, and most illnesses were thought of in terms of the four humours. In 1543, Andreas Vesalius published a groundbreaking book of anatomy based on the dissection of human bodies. In the same year, Nicholas Copernicus published his incendiary text on the movements of the heavenly spheres, both works heralding the start of the scientific revolution. Platter was at the heart of this new way of thinking. He carried out the first of his own dissections shortly after arriving at Montpellier. It was very much a public performance and he noted that besides the other students, the audience contained a mixture of nobles, merchants and monks, and even some young girls, which he thought rather strange given that the subject was a 14-year-old boy. He completed his medical degree at the age of 21 and returned to Baal where he soon established himself as a successful physician. After four years, he was appointed Professor of Practical Medicine at the university, and he went on to become the head of the medical faculty. As a teacher, he emphasized the importance of anatomy and made important contributions in this field, correcting some of the mistakes of Galen, who had based his observations on the dissection of animals. He performed more than 300 human dissections and autopsies over his career commenting, for the benefit of the Baal City Fathers, that this had never knowingly been of a Protestant. He compiled a textbook of anatomy for students which was widely used across Europe for more than 100 years. He amassed a famous collection of curiosities at his house, sponsored a botanical garden and assembled an enormous library of pressed plant specimens and seeds. He was appointed Archiata, director of the city hospitals and overseer of public health and in successive outbreaks of the bubonic plague in which over a quarter of the population died he displayed exceptional courage by staying in the city and attending the sick while other physicians fled. His major work Praxeos Medicae or Medical Practice was published in three volumes late in life at the age of 70. The first volume on injuries to the functions is of most interest to psychiatrists as it has over 170 pages devoted to mental disorders. His first chapter on mental weakness is considered one of the earliest accounts of learning disability. He gave the first working description of cretinism or congenital iodine deficiency, which was common in the low salt soil of mountainous Switzerland. He also described different degrees of intellectual disability and noted that some learning disabled people could have exceptional ability in one area predating the work of Asperger by over 300 years. He also recognised that although some people with learning disability were behaviourally disturbed, others were not. And to better understand the conditions they had to endure, he spent time in the cages and cells in which they were kept. His second chapter, On Mental Consternation, includes definitions and descriptions of various types of stupor and states of unconsciousness, including demoniacal possession, when they think, they think that, they that they are being, being born, born through the, through the air, air, living luxuriously, living luxuriously leading dances dance and having intercourse, intercourse with the devil. devil. His third chapter deals with mental alienation, which he defines as being when one, when judges, one judges, remembers, remembers or, imagines or imagines that which that is, not, is not, as if it, as were, if it were, or that, or that which, which is, is in a wrong, in a wrong or, irrational or irrational way. way. His concept of mental alienation encompassed mania, drunkenness, hypochondria, foolishness and melancholy, 
and his description of this was drawn upon by Robert Burton in his hugely influential Anatomy of Melancholy. His chapter on mental fatigue deals with sleep and dreams, in which he gives a characteristically matter-of-fact description of the varieties of sleep disturbance. The cause, the cause of, wakefulness of wakefulness and of dreams, and of dreams can either can be, be supernatural, supernatural, supernatural or natural. Or natural. Or natural. If, it if it is a supernatural, it is a supernatural, supernatural cause, cause, it depends, it depends on, God on God or on the, or devil. On the devil. If it is if natural, it is, natural, it is either it is a question of custom, custom or, something or something in the brain, something in the brain. Namely, namely, an excessive, an excessive, disturbance, excessive disturbance, disturbance of the animal, the animal spirits. spirits. Although Plato was one of the first to attempt to differentiate and classify mental disorders, often linking them to organic causes such as infections, traumatic brain injury and other illnesses, he was still a man of his time, firmly believing that if no natural cause could be found, then demonic possession or witchcraft would be the obvious explanation to turn to. He shows a sense of humour in his description of drunkenness and its consequences. Sometimes, Sometimes they are afterwards they are vexed, vexed by, by headache, headache and heaviness of the head, the head, and they then, and they pay, then the pay the price of their foolishness. Their foolishness. He also discusses salaciousness or excessive venereal desire which he suggests happens more readily in women than in men, and that some women, to relieve their lust, try illicit things and fall into base vices. His recommended treatments for psychiatric disorders were not that new. Purges and enemas, bleeding, scarification, cauterization and trepanation. He also used herbal remedies, both topical and internal, and opium for sleep and to calm agitation. Although he argued caution in the use of restraints and chains for furious patients, he was clear that for those who are possessed by demons, if they refuse to pray and amend their ways, they deserve, they deserve to be purged, to be purged by, the by the application of fire. fire. But despite his lapses back into medieval thinking at times, Plato was a trailblazer of the new scientific approach to medicine, which gradually led to the abandonment of supernatural explanations of mental illness. And for this reason, I believe Felix Platter was a true pioneer of psychiatry. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and click the notifications bell if you want to be kept up to date with all the latest videos. See you next time.